The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Markets Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Good morning, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien, coming to you live from TFNN just after 9 a.m. Eastern Time, Thursday morning. we got markets in positive territory. You have an ECB decision. They keep rates exactly where they are. That was expected. you got a press conference going on right now with Lagarde. Uh, they have updated growth estimates and inflation estimates for the coming quarter, the coming year. We'll jump into those in a moment. you got a little bit of volatility in the euro. That's putting a little bit of volatility in the dollar as well. Nonetheless, the market's in positive territory. And look at that acceleration, man. From 3 a.m. Eastern Time, you're up about 43 points from the overnight lows, trading up by four-tenths percent in the S&Ps. All the markets in the green so far this morning. Bitcoin, hanging relatively tough at about 68,000 right now. Crude. 78.59 you take a look at crude on a daily basis i talked about this on the nine o'clock update you know hang it tough man you know we're down a bit by 56 pennies today but you're chopping around near relative highs you got to back it up to all the way november 7th folks it's march 7th right now okay so you're talking about four full months in terms of where crude has been you're pushing higher prices and that could complicate the inflation picture if we start getting higher energy prices to add to the higher inflation numbers we've had on a core perspective for some time. We jump over to yields as we're going to jump to some banks in a moment. Uh, look at the rise we've had. The bounce off that 50% retracement. It's been a decent bounce, man. We were at 109.09 on February 23rd. We're at 111.22. And we have the 10-year yield approaching a number of 4% right now, which is pretty remarkable considering where we come from. Now, New York Community Bank. Check it out. Okay. So we've seen the fall from grace from $14. Their earnings, when they set aside a monumental amount for losses, shock the market. You drop from 10 bucks to $6 the next day. Yesterday, we hit a low of 170. Now, going shorter term, intraday, the news breaks that they're trying to raise capital, OK? That sends the stock down to a buck 70. I wonder if they had already raised capital at that point or if they were trying to raise capital. I mean, can you imagine being a fly in that room, man, on New York Community Bank? Just look at it on a minute basis. These are one-minute bars, folks. From 11.53, the story breaks. Okay, so that's about noon. What's going on? The stock had halted or something? Yeah, it must have gotten halted. Is that what happened? It must have been. You come down to 170 at 12.30, okay? The news breaks, they're trying to raise capital. They do raise that capital. It jumps up to $4.40, Within the span, these are one-minute bars, again, from 2.41 p.m. Eastern Time to 2.58. Now, you had some, what'd you have, some some blocks there. Maybe we had some stoppage there. Not sure what's going on the chart. Nonetheless, you're right back to where you were. Today, we're a bit higher by about four pennies in the pre-market. But be careful on this one, which is what I said yesterday as well. As the story out there, how about losing seven percent of your deposits in the past month folks yeah they went from 83 billion down to 77 billion so they lost six billion dollars that they had in deposits over the period of the last month and the reason why i stress that is because the pop they got was that they got a billion dollar plus capital injection from investors led by treasury secretary former treasury Tre former treasury secretary steve mnuchin it's a great story getting a billion dollars added, but the outflows have begun, folks, okay? And ask yourself, do you want to be the one left holding the bag? I don't think anybody's going to lose money. I don't think the Fed's going to let them fail, okay? I don't think the Fed's going to let depositors lose capital, no matter how much money you have, okay? And you're guaranteed up to those limits, of course. But keep that in perspective, because the story out there is that they got a billion-dollar capital raise, injection, led by... Yeah, a former Treasury Secretary, okay? So he should know what's going on. But I would be stressing these numbers, okay? That's as of March 5th. The last couple days probably could be the most volatile of all. How much money have they lost uh, yesterday and today, right? So we'll see where we go from there. Nonetheless, they lost 7% of the deposits in the last month, and they raised a billion dollars. 
and now they have Steve Mnuchin as an investor as well. But after all of that volatility, back to a 15 minute to see some context here. Where do we get? We're just back to where you were at the beginning of the week, folks. Three dollars and fifty cents. OK. It's going to be a tough one for New York Community Bank going forward. And if anything, this just sounded the alarm bells a little bit where you can't quite know what's going on when the one bank that the Fed chose to be able to take over the troubled assets of Signature Bank was in big trouble themselves. How does that happen, right? That means that things may not be as rosy as they once appeared across the board, especially in certain individual banks. Because all the stories you keep coming out, right, are that New York Community Bank, they have a lot of properties that are rent controlled. You changed the laws in 2019. That really hurt the ability for that company to move forward. Then they have acquisitions that put them over the $100 billion threshold that has greater capital. All of this was known when the Fed facilitated New York Community Bank taking over some of the troubled assets of Signature Bank. And that is this portion of the chart, almost a year back. Remember, March 17th was a Friday. March 20th was a Monday. They buy Signature over the weekend. That kind of saved the banking crisis, if you recall. The market takes off to higher prices with the banking sector. You trade up to 14 bucks, And all the articles are written basically illustrate that everybody knew that they were in trouble at that time. That's not the case. That's not what we were finding out. Hindsight's always 20-20, folks. Uh, you got them losing 7 to 8% of their bank deposits. It's pretty simple math. If you're doing business at that bank, right? And this is where risk reward is everything in the markets. And it's a lot of things in life as well, man. We are constantly making risk reward analysis, analysis in our head of many different calculations, right? You want to go to graduate school? What's the risk reward of paying that tuition, right? You make these calculations all the time. That's the problem once you get in big trouble with the bank. The risk is that even if the risk isn't losing all your capital, the risk is you got to go through the process of somehow that bank going under, right? The Federal Reserve facilitating the return of those funds. There's no reward. That's the kicker. There is no reward of keeping your money at this bank if it's actually risking going through a failure. And if a bank loses 7% of their deposits in a week, you better believe that they're uh, in a month, excuse me, you better believe that they are at risk of a failure. So simple risk reward. A lot of people would be taking their money out of there, even if it's not at risk technically, there's still risk to being involved in that if a bank does go under versus the reward is like almost nothing, okay? Now, yeah, you have banking relationships, et cetera, all that stuff that goes along, but you can find another bank and many people are finding another bank and just pay attention to what happened yesterday. All you did is get back to where you were and they lost six billion in deposits over the month and they got a billion dollars back in an injection from Mnuchin among many others. Not exactly a um, saving grace for that company as you're trading at $3.50 for New York Community Bank. Markets, though, we're lifting higher, man. S&P's up by about 23. So I mentioned euro. Got a little bit of volatility in the euro. You spike lower. You spike back higher. We're nearing 1089, back from being 1087. You take a look at the longer-term picture of the euro. Just chopping around right now as you see a little bit of volatility in both directions. And when we get back, folks, we're going to be talking to our man Kevin Hinks. We'll talk about some of this market action. We'll talk about some of the euro. And we'll talk about some of the projections that they have for inflation and for growth going forward. Because, boy, they're talking about 0.6% growth this year. That's going to be a tough one going forward. They may be cutting before we end up cutting here. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be right back. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years 
years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. Welcome back, folks. We've got the markets in positive territory. Apple up by about 70 pennies right now, trading at 169.82. We closed at 169.12 yesterday. It's been quite a pullback for Apple shares as this market continues to surge higher. You take a look at the daily. You talk about a pullback, man. We're in some dire territory, as in you were at the lows of October. Do you remember where the market was in October, man? Let's put some context in what's going on because we, the the, we have Apple back where we were in the October lows, okay, is that right? I got to do this, make sure we're there. We sure are. Yeah, I just wanted to make sure I wasn't distorting the charts here. October 27th, Apple's trading at 168. We're trading at 169 right now. And in the same time, October 27th, you have the S&Ps trading at 4174, and you're up 25% over that period of time. The market is up 25% over that period of time, and Apple is stagnant over that period of time. And what do you think NVIDIA has done over that time? NVIDIA has traded from 400 to 900 over that time. We're going to get a new high print on the open. Absolutely remarkable. The stock does just not stop. There you, there's your NVIDIA overnight action. We're pushing 903 for NVIDIA. They are climbing, folks, to a remarkable level. Well, you now are at $2.25 trillion. Uh, for some context, Amazon, 1.8. Right? Google, 1.6. Okay? Even Apple, with the haircut they're getting, 2.6. Okay? Now, Microsoft is the leader, as they have overtaken with the extension of the AI run. It's still sitting at $3 trillion. But did you see NVIDIA overtaking Apple in market cap this year? They are so close, man. We were just at $2 trillion. We're at $2.25 right now. And I just showed you that Apple's at about two six. There is a changing of the guard. Uh, and now listen, you know, this is, this, is, this is getting a little lofty at 900, okay? We're at a price level right now where you were sitting at 100 16 months ago, and you're sitting at 900 right now. I've talked about before, they've actually had their earnings per share come down over a period of this rally as they have overachieved to dramatic fashion when their earnings come out, their guidance, et cetera. But pretty remarkable that you're pushing 900 bucks, you're gonna have NVIDIA shares open at a record high. 903 is the bid ask right now as we as the NASDAQ 100 trading up three quarters percent. And I talked about the S&P, but how about the NASDAQ? The NASDAQ 100 is up 4,000 points 
4,000 points, basically a 25% run, okay? What's that, 1,400, 2,800, ah, close, almost 30% run. Apple is flat over that time. And that number for China, man, that's gonna be a constant drag on Apple. Pretty remarkable, you get that double top, you know. We have been in quite a time in these markets, man. You always wanna be aware of what could happen, okay? If you don't think that Apple can go back to 130, folks, I don't know what kind of Kool-Aid you're drinking, but stop drinking it, okay? Because we were just trading at $60, let alone we came into COVID and Apple at $80, okay? Wouldn't be outlandish if you're trading at 130 a few years later, right? Nonetheless, you get the point, we are trading higher, but even Apple struggling a bit, you're up by 80 pennies about today, but you get the market soaring higher. Okay, back to the euro. Now, the ECB is out with their rate decision today. They hold rates steady. We're seeing a little bit of euro reverberations right now. You're right back to where you before that economic number and getting into those numbers, man. So it's interesting to see how this is going to shape, where we go forward, where they go forward. The headline, the ECB holds rates as central bankers weigh timing of cuts. Now, this is going on across the globe, right? Our Federal Reserve meets in 13 days, March 20th, my birthday. Put it on your calendar. Uh, do you remember when they were talking about March cuts? Amazing how quickly things change. So March 20th will be the meeting. We hear from Chairman Powell again today. He's in front of the Senate today. Don't expect any surprises. If he didn't surprise anybody yesterday, he's not gonna do it today, that's for sure, okay? But what is interesting is to compare it what's happening with Europe, how that's gonna drive our Federal Reserve and how that's gonna drive our dollar, okay? The ECB has held rates steady but boy, they got a different economy. And listen, politics aside, man, it is bonkers how our economy is perceived versus what is happening over in Europe, okay? Europe right now, this is the number I wanna get to. Here we go. Forecasts, okay? Because they kept the rates the same, but what are they thinking going forward? That's always, well, not what have you done for me in the past, right? The market wants to know, what are you thinking in the next three, six, 12, nine months? The ECB published fresh economic forecasts on Thursday, showing downward revisions to inflation, which is great, but growth as well. This is where we differ so greatly from the ECB. Our economy is on fire right now, okay? And yes, that's a little bit of a problem with inflation, but guess what? That allows us, okay, the ability to meander with greater ease than if you're trying to handle an economy that might be sinking, right? So much for the soft landing. They're gonna have some problems here. The ECB expects inflation to average 2.3% this year and 2% next year. They were looking just in December at 2.7% this year and 2.1% next year, respectively. The growth part of things, 0.6% for the Eurozone this year compared with in December when they were talking about 0.8%, right? Man. Now, what, is, what do those numbers mean? Those numbers mean that they probably don't be have to be as restrictive as they currently are. I mean, if their expectations for forecasts come to fruition, then that means that you're going back to 2%. That's the number. So why do they have to be so restrictive if they're already there, especially if their restrictive policy rates have driven their economy to an area where they're gonna grow barely half a percent for the year. So what's that gonna do? That's gonna allow them the possibility, and here it is, right? that they may be able to signal earlier rate cuts, okay? Now, this is where things get interesting for us. If the ECB starts cutting earlier, what's gonna happen there? Well, what's gonna happen there is their rates are gonna be lower. People are going to need less euros to go after lower yields in the Eurozone. And as a result, they might flock to American yields that are staying higher because we have much higher growth. No matter what anybody says, folks, America is on fire with a hot economy, okay? We have much higher growth. So as a result, we don't need to cut as quickly to stimulate the economy or not to restrict the economy is another way to say it, okay? And if we don't have to do that, we could have higher yields as they could be the ones cutting first and then what would that do? That would add a little bit of strength actually to the dollar if that's the case. Okay, now that's just one scenario of possibilities to work your way through. But there's a reason why when you take a look at the dollar, 
Okay, and you got a little bit of a reverberation. That's maybe why you got the initial spike to dollar strength there on that euro decision. There's your 830 volatility. Where is it? Kind of right in here is 830. You spike a little bit higher, we give it back. But for some context here, the reason why we had the dollar spike to 115, and I'm not saying it's gonna happen, but it is interesting. Keep your eye on the ECB, because if they start cutting dramatically and the Fed is not able to cut dramatically just yet, that is gonna put some impetus for the dollar potentially to trade higher. And yes, that could weigh on commodities and so forth. But the reason why we accelerated 115 is because we were the ones that were hiking first, right? We were the ones. The Fed was the first one to the hiking cycle versus the ECB. The dollar accelerates higher. We hit 115, we're back at 103. Uh, we'll see where we go, but 0.6% growth in the euro. Imagine if that was happening here. That's not happening here, folks. We're talking three to 5% growth here. We're coming back for the opening bell. Don't go away. Are you ready to take charge of your financial future? TFNN is your gateway to the world of trading and investing. Whether you're starting out or scaling up, TFNN empowers traders and investors of all skill levels with top-notch investing systems, strategies, and techniques. It's time to protect and grow your money with insight you can trust. Join us live Monday through Friday during market hours for exclusive content that moves with the markets. At TFNN, we bring the trading floor to you. Our seasoned hosts are here to answer your calls and questions live on the air. Check out the Tiger's Den for just $1 and follow us on YouTube and become part of our vibrant community. And remember, at TFNN, we're so confident in the value we provide that we offer a 30-day money-back guarantee on all new premium newsletter subscriptions and services. You have absolutely nothing to risk, so why wait? Tune in live to Tiger TV and transform your trading journey because when you know better, you invest better. Join us and experience the difference today. TFNN, educating investors. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30 plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen, as well as many more, and he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30-year T-bonds as they both influence Forex markets tremendously. When you sign up for the Tiger Forex Report, you also gain instant access to Teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted, Forex Strategies and Fundamentals, What is Behind the Tiger Forex Report. For all the details and to start your 30-day Tiger Forex Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Are you ready to take your trading to the next level? Introducing Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, your key to successful active trading. Tom O'Brien, renowned for his expertise in the financial markets, has designed Market Insights to be your daily guide to profitable trades. Tom publishes his daily Market Insights newsletter every market day before the market open, along with updates when warranted. Stay ahead of the game with Tom's real-time analysis and trade recommendations delivered straight to your inbox. Whether you're a seasoned trader or just starting out, Market Insights provides the edge you need to navigate the markets with confidence. Ready to join the ranks of successful traders? Head over to TFNN.com and subscribe to Market Insights today. Don't miss out on this opportunity to supercharge your trading results. Market Insights comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee for all new subscribers, so you have nothing to risk. Don't miss out on this opportunity to revolutionize your trading game. Head over to TFNN.com right now to join the thousands of traders who have already experienced the power of Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, firsthand. TFNN, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. We got S&Ps. Markets open. S&Ps up about a half a percent. You're up by 28 points right now, trading at 51.41. NASDAQ 100 catches a bid, up by almost 8 tenths percent, up 135 points, making 145 points 
18,189. You got the Dow and the Russell in positive territory as well. Bitcoin up by $200, nearing 68,000. Crude trading lower today. We're approaching $78.12 for crude. You jump over to gold contract, up by about $4. Gold with a little bit of volatility as we got the euro jumping around. We got the dollar jumping around as well. And we jump to notes and bonds. What are we talking about right now? Let's see where we're at. 4.08%. 4.08%. The yield on the 10 year. 4.08, man. We're approaching four. Remember we were just over five? It's huge moves. And NVIDIA opens at about $900. Did we get a 900 print? We did get a 900 print on the open. You trade up to 901.58 on the open for NVIDIA. And with that, you're dropping a bit to 897.50. Still positive by more than a percent today for NVIDIA shares. $2.25 trillion. Man, remarkable. We jump over to the euro. Euro US dollar right now. Yeah, you get it all back from that initial plunge to 1087. We're basically at 190, 1090, excuse me, 109 for the euro. And you keep our eye on the dollar with the dollar at 103.15. Now, when you look at the dollar index, the euro is obviously a huge component, okay? But they're not the only currency in town, of course. As how about you take a look at the dollar yen, man, right? We've been taking a look at this chart for a while. You back it up to the three-year weekly. That is quite a weekly bar we got going on, folks. Okay? You're talking about pushing the highs of 150 for a triple top. You got a breakaway bar going on. And the yen is dealing with their own deal. Japan is dealing with their own deal, of course. Okay? And we talked about this yesterday in terms of when the dollar yen is trading lower. Okay? The first currency pair is your base currency the second one is the quote so what this means is you throw a one you ever want to read a currency pair folks if you didn't check out the program yesterday i'll tell you again real quick and even if you did check out the program yesterday currency pairs until you just do it over and over and over it's very difficult in your brain to understand higher price lower price is that strength is that weakness just throw a one in front of the currency pair so what this means is one u.s dollar is equal to how many yen okay and what is this equaling well, what this doing is, this is talking about yen strength. It would add to dollar weakness. And when you look at a commodity, if you have a weaker dollar, it's going to take you more of that same dollar to buy the same commodity. So we were pushing where it was $1 will get you 150 yen. Well, it's not as strong anymore. That same dollar is now getting you 147 0.88 yen. So remember that when you're looking at currency pairs, because you can mix them all around, right? This is dollar yen. You can have yen dollar, right? What do we look at all the time? It's interesting. The dollar yen is usually how things are quoted, but then you jump around to the other side where you go euro US dollar. Well, this time the euro is the base quote. The dollar is the quote. Excuse me. The euro is the base currency. The dollar is the quote currency. So in this one, you're talking about one euro is worth how many US dollars, right? So it's an easy way. Just throw a one in front of the currency pair. One euro equals how many U.S. dollars? We're at 109 right now, but keep your eye on that dollar yen, man, because I think that's a little bit of a rollover. And as regardless of what the dollar is doing, that dollar yen is going to influence things going forward. We got gold contract hanging at 2161. We're as high as 2172 this morning at about 8 a.m. All right, we jump around to what else we got going on. Keep our eye on some of the movers today. New York Community Bank, they catch a little bit of a bid. They like that billion-dollar cash injection, especially led by a former Treasury Secretary, Mnuchin. We'll see how the day goes for them. As we see yesterday, started off pretty calm, and that's not always the case as you go forward. We'll see if they can stem the withdrawals going on for their deposit base. Losing 7% of your deposits in a month, that's a recipe for disaster, as we know with some of those banks. All right, jumping around, what else we got going on? Let me pull up some of the articles here. We talked about the ECB. We talked about New York Community Bank. And what else do we got? How about Victoria's Secret? Boy, they got some problems, man. This was quite a story in the beginning. They are down 25%, Victoria's Secret, man. Uh, disappointing guidance for the first quarter and the full year. They're talking about $6 billion in full year revenue. The market was looking for 6.2, maybe even higher than that. And yeah, you take a look at this chart. That's when they spun off. You drive from 48 to 76, 
you drive to 13 bucks, you somehow catch a bid with the market from the October lows of last year, you trade up to 30 bucks and the writing's on the wall that that's not the case, man. I was a bull in this stock a long time ago, man, but they got some problems going on when you're talking about missing to that degree in revenue when the economy's doing pretty well, all things considered. This market's doing pretty well as the market catches a lift on the open right now. As you get the NASDAQ 100 approaching 1% in the positive, we check around to some of the FANG stocks. Apple shares. I mean, look at this. Apple continuing to underperform versus the indices. On the day when you get the NASDAQ 100 up a full percent, Apple can barely get into the positive, up by two tenths percent right now for Apple shares. Microsoft up by four tenths percent. Even they sell off on the open. Check that out. We jump over to Google. Google shares up by about half a percent, a little bit of selling on the open as well. We jump over to Meta shares this morning. There's a bid for you. Meta up by almost 1.5 percent and climbing higher, $503.82. Mr. Zuckerberg doing well, quite the resurgence for Meta shares. We jump over to Netflix shares up about seven tenths percent. You jump to Tesla. Tesla shares catch a bid up by 1.4 percent. I've been talking about this one, man. The only thing that's dire here is Tesla's got a China problem, to put it lightly. They got a demand problem. EVs have a demand problem that's just blown out of the water in terms of over the last year that nobody saw coming. I'm sure some did, but the market did not see it coming, that's for sure. And they have a bigger problem, that Elon does not have his $55 billion pay package anymore. And as a result of that, the shares that he actually does own that are margined for his purchase of Twitter could get a margin call and a short... Um, when you approach somewhere around $100, you're going to start seeing a lot more articles about the exact math of where that margin call may come in. But boy, you talk about a perplexing situation. Just this week alone, you're down from 200 to 180. And if you approach 100, you might have Elon getting margin squeezed. And what does happen at that price point, okay, is that Elon would either have to put up more capital or sell the shares. And here's the kicker. Is he really going to put up more capital just to hold the same shares. All you're doing is putting up capital behind the same shares. You're not getting more shares, right? And he'd have to take shares from, whether it's SpaceX or something like that. He may say, you know what, man? I'm just gonna keep what I have, sell those shares if I need to. I'm not gonna dilute myself in my other endeavors. And maybe that's the writing on the wall. It's one of those tail risks. And I'm not even sure it's that big of a tail risk, okay? Um, it's not a likelihood, but boy, you better be recognizing those risks if you're in there on Tesla shares. Yeah, I guess uh, you got Citi out there today maintaining a hold rating on the stock, saying it will wait for a more compelling entry point. Maybe, maybe, maybe they're waiting for the uh, margin call as well. Man. All right, when we get back, folks, we'll take a look. How about Kroger? Look at that, man. Kroger catching a bid up by 6.4% as they beat on their numbers. Stay tuned, folks. S&P's up by 35. NASDAQ 100 up by 170. We'll be right back. Are you ready to take charge of your financial future? TFNN is your gateway to the world of trading and investing. Whether you're starting out or scaling up, TFNN empowers traders and investors of all skill levels with top-notch investing systems, strategies, and techniques. It's time to protect and grow your money with insight you can trust. Join us live Monday through Friday during market hours for exclusive content that moves with the markets. At TFNN, we bring the trading floor to you. Our seasoned hosts are here to answer your calls and questions live on the air. Check out the Tiger's Den for just $1 and follow us on YouTube and become part of our vibrant community. And remember, at TFNN, we're so confident in the value we provide that we offer a 30-day money-back guarantee on all new premium newsletter subscriptions and services. You have absolutely nothing to risk. So why wait? Tune in live to Tiger TV and transform your trading journey. Because when you know better, you invest better. Join us and experience the difference today. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. 
the Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold. Traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, folks. We have the S&Ps up by 32, markets in positive territory. And yeah, you have Kroger up by 7% as they beat, taking a longer term look at this thing. You're talking about highs of 2022 at 62.78. You back it up on a monthly basis, and those are the only highs out there, man. Looks like Kroger might be running for $60. You're up by 7.3% as you continue to climb on Kroger numbers. And yeah, the company earned a buck 34 a share. The market was only looking for a buck 13. In the world of groceries, man, margins are always tight, so you crush it on earnings. That's quite a crush. Revenue, $37.06 billion, actually slightly below expectations. So margins somehow, buck 34 share of the market likes it when they're taking it to the bottom line, that's for sure. American Eagle, back to a short-term time frame. AEO is their symbol. Yeah, up by 9%. How about that one, man? Uh, beat analyst estimates, 61 cents a share on revenue of $1.68 billion. They were expected to make 50 cents a share on about the same revenue, $1.67. So again, the earnings story is they trade higher. Give it back a little bit on the open, but you're still talking about up by 8.6% for them. You back it up, a little bit of a different story, though. Look at these. Look at these charts, right? You're right back to the highs of 2018. The highs of 2007 are 35 bucks. You were up to 38 uh, if you're into roller coasters, check out American Eagle, folks. You're on the way up. Be careful you don't get caught on the way down, though, because look at this stock, man. It is a roller coaster. So keep that in perspective if you're looking at American Eagle out there this morning. Remarkable, right? All right, what else we got going on? Yeah, this is an interesting story out here from the journal. Folks, if you scroll Facebook, Instagram, anything like that, my goodness, all I see is Timo ads, I feel like. And I, I scroll Instagram sometimes. That's my mindless scroll occasionally. Uh, $2 billion is what they spent on Facebook last year, the top advertiser at Google. Timu, yeah, pushing into America. And who's who's benefiting? Facebook and Google to a pretty dramatic degree, man. Yeah, uh, so PDD, the parent company of Timo, is that Pinduoduo, I think? $2 billion on advertisements last year. Familiar? Yeah, pretty remarkable, man. They also became one of Google's top five advertisers by spending last year. Imagine that, right? Imagine saying, guess what? We're going to be the biggest advertiser for Facebook, and we're going to be a top five advertiser for Google. How do you compete with that, man? Whew. This only launched in 2022, right? It caught, as they say here, execs off guard at both tech companies, which long have been the dominant players. I mean, how do you anticipate that a company is going to be created in 2022? And just like that, they'll be the biggest advertisers out there across the board. But that's about growth, man. Fast fashion giant Sheen, the other online shopping platform, um, they're also spending pretty dramatically out there. But I do see those Timo ads all the time. And I'm always like, man, at least the only ones I'm seeing. Look at the China revenue for Meta. 
kaboom, in 2023, up to 13.6 billion after being at 7.5 and 7.4 billion for 2001 and 20, 2022. Yeah. And they're talking about a profit of 2.1 billion in the third quarter of 2023. And the company spent nearly $3 billion in sales and marketing during that period. Over 90 days, right? But it is. Everything I see, I feel like. And they get some great ads there, Timo. They do. It seems like everything I'm seeing. I say, that's a cool product. I don't click on it. It's an ad. But nonetheless, yeah. They had a Super Bowl ad in there as well. 30-second ad four times during the Super Bowl. Yeah, man. Remarkable. Facebook, the big benefiter. And that's not going to end anytime soon. You jump over to MetaShares. There you go, up by another 1.4% today. All-time highs from Meta shares. Is that it today? Yeah, it is. We just hit an all-time high from Meta, 505.90. This thing just continues higher. Jump over to Amazon shares. They're barely positive today. Google shares, barely positive as well. We keep our eye on Apple. Look at it, man. Be careful of Apple out here, folks. All right, Apple is negative when everything else is positive. This thing is underperforming the market dramatically. They have a huge problem in China going on in terms of their phone sales over there. If you ever saw a headline like that in America, that iPhone sales in the US are down 24% over the first six weeks of the year. I don't know what would happen to Apple. So they make a ton of money, okay, off of services, but boy, their bread and butter is selling $1,000, $1,500 phones to everybody that they can, and it seems like that business is becoming increasingly difficult in China, to say the least, as you're off 30 plus dollars from where they were trading at the end of last year for Apple shares. All right, what else we got out there? Yeah, let's take an eye on crude, man. I mean, how about, you know, this deal in the Red Sea is just not going to stop, man. As you got fatal attacks going on now, as you got three people dead, I mean, how, you know, I don't, I don't know if you could pay somebody enough, probably, and you could, okay, but they're not going to pay them probably what they deserve to run a ship through this alley. Um, three people killed against a merchant ship. I mean, these aren't, Soldiers, folks, these are merchant ships, marking the first fatalities claimed by the group since it began targeting vessels in the Red Sea. Yeah, they suffered damage on Wednesday after being hailed by an entity declaring itself as the Yemeni Navy. And yeah, um, you got three people dead out there, and it's only going to escalate, and that could complicate the oil picture just a bit. Nonetheless, not happening today. You're down about seven tenths percent. There was your spike yesterday to above eighty dollars and fifty cents. You see the volatility today, and you're back up to seventy-eight sixty right now with the price of crude. We jump over to gold. Gold giving back those gains. Still in the positive, but you're down about fourteen dollars from the highs of twenty-one seventy-two. You're trading at twenty-one fifty-eight. We keep our eye on the euro as the ECB stays at their rates, and as I mentioned at the beginning of the show, they're talking about decreased inflation estimate forecasts, they're talking about decreased growth forecasts, all of that hinting to the fact that they may be cutting quicker than we expected. At the same time that our cuts seem to be pushed back, the euro cuts seem to be pushed forward. It's gonna be interesting to see how that shapes the currencies, because if you have our yields staying high, and you have Europe yields dropping, okay, what that's gonna do is, that's going to add to the impetus to buying U.S. bonds to capitalize on U.S. yields, driving dollar strength. That might be a component that plays out at a time when many have expected maybe the dollar to trade a little bit lower. We'll keep our eye on the euro, man. Now, as I talked about in the beginning of the program, the yen's an important one as well, but look what's happening here. We've got a little bit of a bounce back in the yen as well to 148.20 right now from 147.58 for that yen. Let's jump over to some of the bigger banks, man. J.P. Morgan, up to 189.49. Again, we got Chairman Powell today. Don't expect any surprises, okay? But we do have the chairman in front of the Senate today. You never know if you might get a few headlines that drive some of the action. Look at the run that J.P. Morgan is on, man. And it's interesting. One of the biggest stories out there yesterday was Chairman Powell talking about the fact that the plans to hold the big banks to greater capital requirements might be out the door. And I don't get that one, folks. I don't. All right, the banks are going to be fine. We've seen this happen before. Okay, all I got to do is bring you back to where we were before Silicon Valley Bank. Chairman Powell was literally, okay, to bring this back. Let's put it on a daily. And I have to find the day. We have to go back even further than that because I remember Chairman Powell was literally in front of Congress when this was going on. I think it was a year ago right now, okay? 
He was in front of Congress, and it was. It was a year ago right now. He was, he was doing the dual testimony between the House and the Senate, and he got a lot of questions saying, hey, Chairman Powell, are you really going to you know, bring down these huge capital requirements on big banks? Are you going to be applying them to regional banks? And you had so many politicians saying, that's not right. We need these regional banks, okay? You can't hold them to higher capital requirements. And then like three days later, we found out that the regional banks were in massive problems because of hold to maturity securities. We'll talk a little bit more about this when we get back. But nonetheless, banks trading higher, markets trading higher. One more segment. Don't go away, folks. We'll be right back. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. The reality is that navigating financial markets can be risky. Markets can be chaotic and difficult to understand. Having the latest market advice can help you turn this chaos into a key for creating winning trades. At TFNN, we understand that it can be hard to find reliable market news. That's why each of our market experts offers their very own market newsletter, a must-have tool for every trader out there striving to find an edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets so you can analyze the market before you trade. Try any of our great newsletters risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. Just visit the Newsletters tab on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. As uh, weight loss drugs, the new holy grail to trading higher, man. Novo Nordisk up by 8.8% right now. That's a one-minute chart. You take it back on a daily, man. This thing is in quite a run. That's back to $67 a year ago. We back it up even further than that on a monthly. And look at this run, man. From about 20 bucks in the middle of 2017. But yes, today they're trading higher. After the Danish, pharma after the Danish pharmaceutical giant, positive early trial data for a new experimental weight loss drug. Phase one trial, highly anticipated obesity drug, showed a 13% weight loss in participants after 12 weeks, uh, and it eclipses the 6% loss recorded after a 12-week trial of the wildly popular Wigovi. So they're just keep pumping them out, man. 
Yeah, they're going to have a phase two trial that's going to begin the second half of this year with results expected in early 2026. Think about that, right? So you pop seven, eight, nine percent today on a phase one trial, and they're going to do a phase two trial, and we'll let you know how that works out in two years. They got some uh, quite a line to ramp that up, but nonetheless, that is, uh, yeah, quite the acceleration. Weight loss drugs, the holy holy grail of biotech right now, drugs. Folks, maybe that's going to be a little bit of an impetus, but uh, not sure that's going to save the obesity problem. It's going to help, okay, but it's not going to save the obesity problem unless we make some changes in terms of a little bit more activity and a little bit less eating of highly processed foods, especially foods that are highly processed with sugar. That would be my advice. S&Ps. We're nearing the all-time highs on Monday, man. 51.45 right now for the S&Ps. And look at it. Everything's catching a bit. Look at Amazon. Amazon just jumped. You're up by a full percent right now. Even Apple joined the party. Apple gets back into positive territory right now. How about Meta? Look at this run. Meta up by 2.5% to the positive side right now. And how about NVIDIA? 908.83 for NVIDIA shares. Quite the market, folks. Buckle up. Stay tuned. We got our man Basil Chapman coming up next, folks. Thanks so much for starting your trading day right here with me at TFNN. Stay tuned for Basil. He's coming up next, and I'll see you tomorrow morning for Friday action. Uh, it's a busy day, folks. We still got the chairman. He's coming up in front of the Senate. Expect some volatility. Markets green across the board. Basil Chapman's coming up next, folks. Stay tuned. Have a great Thursday, everybody.